Yo, that's what's going on with y'all. I have been gone for a long time. My hair is now shorter, the beard is now scruffy, and that's just the way that things are going to be for a while. I'm also standing up because I've moved the space in my office. I don't know why I pointed to the green screen. That didn't change for you guys unless I finally got enough books to review the, to do the background thing. Yet nobody knows what I'm talking about. Don't worry about it. We're here. We're going to be reviewing a book called Unwind because I was bedridden for a really long time and I needed something to listen to and that happened to be in my library. I don't know what it's about. So the whole premise of the book is something called Unwinding. And what Unwinding actually is is due to the setting of the book, there was a second civil war over the issue of abortion, which is a little bit scary because I could see that actually happening. The ultimate result, which again is kind of scary because it's something I could see actually happening, is that the country agrees that there is no way you can touch a life from contraception until age 13, at which point you may decide if you would like to unwind the child up until age 18. Unwinding is, in so many ways, an abortion. It ultimately kills the person involved, and their organs and body and other squishy things go towards organ transplants and things of that nature. It's an interesting premise. Uh, like I say, it's a little bit scary, because I can kind of see that becoming the case in another 20 years or so. It's sort of a shame that the concept for this book is actually so interesting and possibly even relevant in today's time, because the writing is especially dull and the narrating for the audiobook that I'm listening to is even more dull. So even though the idea of it's kind of interesting, it just falls very, 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 very flat, kind of like Christian Stewart's greatest acting performances. Yeah. Anyway, our protagonist is Connor, is a 16-year-old who has just learned that he is about to be unwound. And there's a moment where there's supposed to be a romance, but once again, the writing is very flat, so it comes off as nothing more than a turtle trying to mate with a rock. Which, again, not something that couldn't be interesting, but it's only interesting in the same way that a clown car full of clowns is interesting, in that it's only going to last a couple seconds. Unfortunately, this is an entire book that lasts for several hours if you listen to the whole thing. So, Connor learns that he is meant to be unwound by his parents, and decides that he's going to send them on a guilt trip that would make even my mother proud by doing much better in his life and by doing good in school. But it, this is done purely out of spite because it is impossible to reverse an unwind order. So Connor, Connor is just being a vengeful little shit and an angsty teenager. The main character, everybody! It's not enough to just give a character a problem and expect us to be able to relate to that character. You have to show us their humanity before you threaten to take it away for it to have an impact. This book literally opens with taking that humanity away, and therefore any impact that that loss might have had on us if we knew Connor as a character before said order was given is completely lost and made meaningless. It's the same problem that Game of Thrones have. When you open murdering everybody, you know that nobody's safe, and therefore the life has less impact than it would ordinarily have. So Connor runs away and discovers a trucker so nice and generic that might bring dies a little out of embarrassment. And then the police discover Connor and the trucker via Connor's phone, which is really fucking stupid. But he's a teenager, so whatever. Then, just as Connor's story is starting to you know kick off a little bit, we switch. <coughs> then, just as Connor's story is starting to kick off a little bit, we switch points of view completely to somebody named Risa and a piano playing thing. So in so many words, we learn that Lisa, or Risa, I forget which, is a very good piano player, but not good enough to be left alive, and she's about to be unwound. And then we move points of view again, leaving us no time to get attached to our character again, and her life, once again, is left being very unimpactful on the reader. Shame. So we then get introduced to a character named Levi, who is going to be unwound as part of the parent's... Uh, sacrifice and giving 10% of their children to God. Again, a little bit scary because that's something I could see actually happening. However, it's worth mentioning at this point, the story is blown and slow and it just isn't getting better. I don't care enough to finish it. So hey, bingo card. <laughs> and while we did hit bingo once, the fact is this it's just not interesting enough to finish. It's a really great premise, but the rest of the book just lets it down entirely. It's not worth reading. Overall, I'd say I have to give this book a 2 out of 10. Valiant effort, good idea, very poor execution. So, anyway, that's all for now. If you have something else you want me to review, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. Until then, drink plenty of water, tell your parents that you love them, and stroke your mustache at night.